Welcome back. Speedy justice delivery in maritime litigation will enhance the economy of the sea and ultimately the country. This is the view of participants at a strategic admiralty law seminar for judges in Lagos. We have some highlights of what transpired at that seminar. As the master, part of our key mandate is the promotion of maritime trade. And the pursuit of that mandate in every economic activity, there will always be disputes, there will always be disagreement, and that the arm of government that is charged with the responsibility of resolving such disputes and interpreting the law is the judiciary. And we think that it's important that you build up their capacity to understand the unique nature of shipping and maritime trade as a whole, and to bring them up to date with the current laws governing activities in the sector. This is one such initiative to build up the capacity of judges, to help them understand the issues, to bring them up to date with current laws and legal development as well as conventions governing uh, participation in that sector in the maritime trade. The Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Nemasa Dakuku Peterside, shed in some light on how judges could contribute to the development of the economy of the seas. Participants for the two-day seminar held in Lagos were drawn from the Court of Appeal, the Federal High Court, and state judges of littoral states. A retired chief judge of the Federal High Court, Justice Ibrahim Alta, takes the judges through some of the roles expected of them, while a senior advocate of Nigeria, Chidi Logu, dwelt extensively on speedy justice delivery in maritime litigation. The basic principle is that a good judiciary is synchronous for foreign direct investment. The judiciary, if independent, um, Reliable gives uh, investors a feeling of comfort that the rules of the game will apply to all evenly and are predictable. This is very, very important. Because they say money is a coward. If you know if you go to a place there are no windows for you to go out, it will not go there. So we have to make it uh, make uh, a rules very comfortable for other people to come. That allows them to feel their investment is safe. They can also plan their activities with that in mind, with that in mind. That certainly assures long-term investment. We can never quantify the, the benefits and the, the advantages of time with regard to maritime litigation because for every vessel that comes into port, that is arrested, there are issues connected with time because time is money and for uh, most of the contracts, uh, bills of lading, there are penalties for delays, there are penalties for various things because a vessel should be able to go in and out of port without any complications as speedily as possible. Some of the judges had comments on issues of jurisdiction, the place of alternative dispute resolution, ex parte orders in admiralty matters and much more. I think that the simple thing what we should do at all times is to look at the claim as filed by the plaintiff. Over the years, the courts have said, what you should do is to look at the substance, but not the form of the claim. When we look in terms of arbitration clause in an agreement, sincerely, we don't have to impute any other thing other than what the parties have agreed to bind them. As for me, any time I see a petition clause, I, use the, I look at the use of language. Whether there's an option of going to court, or they are bound themselves to first approach a petition before any other thing can be done. Most of the problems we have, we need to trace those problems to the lawyers. It is, a, no judge wants to sit over a case without taking those cases. Lawyers who come to court, they are not ready to move on. Either they have not been paid or they are just trying to play games. So when cases are delayed, it is not 
necessarily as a result of the laziness of a judge or that the judge does not want to work. It takes two to tango. And I think um, maybe with more education and awareness, something can happen. The chairman of the event, former justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Emmanuel Ayola, believes that ultimately specialization of judges will aid speedier dispensation of maritime and even other cases. These are the things which are, uh, I will probably put before uh, council when the time comes so that we can really use people. If you are not fully equipped to understand the particular issue, you are likely to spend longer time because from my experience, there, there are cases in which, cases which judges do not touch at all. And they are accumulating. Criminal cases, zero. Maybe admiralty, depends on the judge. If it's all like that, it depends on the judge. So many things depend on the judge. And these are things I think we are going to uh, take a look at so that we encourage judges to let us know the area in which the particular judge has intellectual interest. When I say interest, people will think I'm talking about <laughs> the other interest. But if you can know what your interest is, there's nothing wrong with a judge who is serving in Casina with interest in admiralty being kept in Kano. When he can come to Lagos and deal with admiralty cases and go back. We can do all that. These are these are the things which uh, we'll be looking I think we should be looking at. Justice Ayala has promised to expedite some of the suggestions from here at the meeting of the National Judicial Council so that judges can be more effective and efficient.